A place that's off limits to most of us was in the news this past week. The federal government announced it has granted a license for a new foot and mouth vaccine, a vaccine developed at the Plum Island Animal Disease Center. With correspondent John Miller, we get a rare inside look. Plum Island sits at the end of New York's Long Island like a question mark. For nearly 60 years, controversies and mysteries have engulfed it. And no wonder. The island is controlled by the Department of Homeland Security. Its labs are staffed by scientists from the United States Department of Agriculture. They come and go by special government ferries guarded by armed officers. We were asked not to film the docks on either side. So what really goes on here? The USDA says scientists study diseases that can affect livestock, primarily overseas, to develop vaccines. And although the government says the germs stored on the island affect only animals, that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. And information about them is strictly protected for security reasons. I cannot comment on our list of pathogens and the inventories and all those things are things that we that are sensitive information. Marvin Grubman, a microbiologist, and Luis Rodriguez, a research leader, work for the Agricultural Research Service, an arm of the USDA on Plum Island. It used to be a battery for the Army before the First World War and into the Second World War. But the idea was, I think this island was going to protect New York City from invading armadas. Right. So today, why is Plum Island still guarded like an armed camp? Post 9-11, security in the U.S., of course, and around the world has increased because of the potential threat of the bioterrorist weapon. So since we work with diseases of animals, it's in the U.S. interest not to allow potential terrorists come in here and obtain the virus and distribute it around the world. Is that the far-fetched plot line of a novel? Maybe not. When Afia Siddiqui, an MIT graduate working as a scientist for Al-Qaeda, was captured in Afghanistan in 2008, Plum Island was on a list of targets she kept. What is so important about the work here? Well, the, the, the majority of the work is focused on, on foot and mouth disease virus. And foot and mouth disease is a economically important disease. So for instance, the outbreak in 2001 in the United Kingdom resulted in the slaughter of millions of animals and the loss of billions of dollars to the economy. And also Microbiologist Grubman has worked on the island for some 36 years. He was evacuated during an outbreak in 1978 of the highly contagious foot and mouth disease, formerly and perhaps more aptly called hoof and mouth which overwhelmingly affects cattle. There was construction going on on the island, and there was a, a release of virus from the laboratory. It never left Plum Island and never reached the mainland. Back then, animals were kept outside in pens, as seen here in the CBS footage. When the virus escaped, it quickly spread from one animal to the next. More than 200 animals had to be killed. An accidental release of A vocal critic of Plum Island is, is Michael Carroll, who detailed his reasons in his 2004 book. The USDA's record in running it, how were they doing? Somewhere between uh, dismal and abominable. Um, their record is really uh, a record of mishaps, outbreaks, uh, people getting infected. After the 1978 outbreak, biocontainment facilities, that's sealed laboratories and holding cells, were built and all animals moved inside. These pictures were taken by CBS in 1999. Here's Luis Rodriguez explaining biosafety procedures. In this case, the primary container is the, the tube, and the secondary container now is the biosafety cabinet. But just five years after that, there were two more outbreaks, this time inside the island's biocontainment units. We have learned from those lessons, so there is a lot of procedures. It's like an onion where you have layer over layer of uh, safety procedures. The Department of Agriculture says Michael Carroll hasn't been on the island in a decade. One might argue you're not current. You don't know exactly what the changes are. Do you reject the idea that it could have gotten much better? I do, because I think there have been a bunch of what I would call facade improvements, but in reality, I think it's the same place it always has been. The very history of Plum Island, a post-World War II Army biological weapons lab, the decades of secrecy, and today's tight security 
all seem to conspire to feed the rumors about what really goes on here. The less that was known, the more people invented. Stories like that of the Montauk monster, a creature spawned in the lab that escaped into the sea. Rumors about alien experiments. But the most pervasive story is the one about Lyme disease. Carol, a lawyer who admits he has no background in science, contends in his book that it, quote, appears to be an inescapable truth, unquote, that Lyme disease was fostered on Plum Island and spread. Marvin Grubman, who's been a microbiologist on the island for decades, says it's not true. There's no scientific basis for suggesting that Lyme disease originated on Plum Island. In fact, scientific evidence indicates it did not. Lyme disease experts agree. Darlin Fish, who's the Lyme expert at Yale, um, has looked at your conclusions and, and said he should stop making these things up. It just scares people. They were researching hundreds and thousands of hard and soft ticks, and at the same time, an unknown bacteria has found its way into the mouth of the Connecticut River in Old Lyme, 10 miles away, where tens of thousands of birds fly. In fact, a person can only get Lyme disease when a black-legged tick infected with a very distinct bacterium attaches to the body and passes it on. Researchers insist that neither the black-legged tick nor the Lyme disease bacterium were ever even at the Plum Island facility. There is, however, no controversy about this. Plum Island is in serious need of improvements. Here is a research facility that was built 55 years ago, and uh, yeah, it needs upgrading, of course, to, to meet modern capabilities. It is an old building, and it's any old house. As we all know, it takes more uh, resources to keep them up but it is safe and, and is functional. The U.S. government plans to move operations off Plum Island to Manhattan, not Manhattan, New York City, Manhattan, Kansas, cattle country, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen anytime too soon. It'll probably be uh, eight to 10 years until it is functional, so we have to be able to maintain the capabilities that we have here. The move to Kansas was cut from the federal budget this year, and opponents say if foot and mouth disease escapes the lab there, it could do the most damage the fastest. But that objection has not stopped the plan. USDA scientists credit research on Plum Island for preventing famine by stopping outbreaks of animal disease in developing nations overseas and kept those diseases from coming here. The idea of swapping capsids. Researchers Marvin Grubman and Luis Rodriguez say they understand people like a good mystery, but they say what really goes on on Plum Island is a better story. We're one of the best kept secrets for uh, scientific research in animal health in the U.S. We're very well known internationally. If you ask any veterinarian anywhere in the world, they all know about Plum Island. For a scientist, it's really hard to take sometimes that people, when they talk about Plum Island, the first thing they talk is about a monster or something like that. Uh, I think our good science speaks for itself, and uh, hopefully people will see that.